<laughs> okay, so welcome back, guys. I'm Sam Hay, and today we've got a very special guest with us. Uh, so this is uh, one of the he's, he's one of the truly good guys in poker. He really enjoys the game. He loves joking around, having fun at the tables. Yes. Although he does like uh, three bet in every half an hour and changing his hairstyle every couple of weeks. <laughs> I think he knows you've... Uh, it's, the third, different... it's the third one now, I think. Yeah, so, I think he knows uh... you've uh, changed the hairstyle. Um, so he's also known as The Husky. He is Ki Su. Su, yeah. Ki Su, <laughs> clear name. So welcome to the Sao Show. Oh, God. <laughs> so in today's video, we're going to talk about how to make and break habits. I read this book uh, called Atomic Habits. There was a few lessons which I got from that, which is really interesting, right? So uh, the first, and I think probably the most important thing for me was uh, what you need to do is you need to change your identity. Right. So if you want to be someone who is very um, healthy or eats healthy, right, then if you are not a healthy person, when you eat healthily, you'll be like, um, you know, this is not who I am and I'm doing something out of character. So it's not who you are. But if you train, if you have the mindset of I, I am a healthy person, then when you eat healthy things, it's congruent to your identity. So that's, it's like you're not, it's not, um, you're not forcing it or it's not just on the surface level. No, it becomes more of a natural thing for you to just, you know, I'm yeah. going to now start yeah. doing this. Like, oh, I feel like having yeah. this and not McDonald's. Yeah, so someone, so someone who is um, a health freak, for example, and goes to the gym every day, for them, it's not like, oh, I need to, oh, I've got to go to the gym. It's like, it's like something that you just do. You just yeah. go every day because it's who you are. When we're all born, mm -hmm. right, um, you know, we, our memory slate is completely empty. Yeah. We don't know nothing about anything. And we are like a blank slate for people around us, generally at that age, who would just be our family, right? They would be ingraining beliefs and values in ourselves. And we just take it because we're just, we don't, you know, we don't, know, we, we, don't, well. we don't know any better. Um, you know, we're not independent enough to sort of forming our own opinions and yeah. values in life. But it's only like at this age now when we can think for ourselves that we start questioning our own beliefs and values and whether or not we want to accept them or not, mm -hmm. or if we want to update them or not. If you're, you know, two, three years old but, and you've been conditioned or the, the, the values and beliefs that your parents have given you to make your bed, you just take it and accept it. And yeah. you'll be like, this is, I, this, this, is what, 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 yeah, this is what, yeah, this is what I am. But you try doing that to an adult. It's hard. Because they've already got the exactly. beliefs. They've already got the beliefs. They're like, well, no, I'm, for example, I'm not I someone who, that. exactly. And now you're trying to make me change my beliefs, which is really, you know, it's really, really, really hard. Uh, say you are someone who wants to stop smoking. Sure. Right? And someone uh, offers you a cigarette. You know, you can either respond by saying, um, oh, thank, uh, no thanks, um, I'm, you know, I'm trying to quit smoking. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's the other response where you could be like, oh, no thanks, I'm just, I just, I don't smoke. Right. And the reason why these two things are different is because if you're like, oh, I'm, you know, I don't, I, I'm trying to stop smoking. You recognize yourself as a smoker, but you're someone who's trying to quit. Whereas on the other hand, when you're just saying, oh, no, thanks, no, I don't smoke. Like, I'm not a person who smokes. So therefore, I wouldn't do these things. I think it's, I think it's much better to say it like that <clears> because yeah. then it's sort of, like you said, in terms of your mindset, it actually helps you thinking, thinking, I've actually achieved what I wanted to, you know, go for. Yeah. And now I'm going to continue that regime of not smoking at all and, yeah. you know, breaking this bad, bad, healthy, you know, unhealthy things that, that you might, you know, smoking or eating yeah. unhealthily and stuff like that. You need to adopt the same values as that person who doesn't smoke rather than, you know, you just um, recognizing yourself still as a smoker, but you're someone who's just trying to do something against your identity. That's a, a, a difficult way to break the habit. Yeah. Um, but then the real question is, well, how do you adopt those values of someone who, you know, doesn't smoke, or if you want to pick up a new habit, just say you want to, you want to, just say you want to get up really early in the mornings. Okay. Oh, just I've say you want to get, just, right, just say you want to make that as a new habit, right? So how do you, how do you uh, adopt the same values as someone who wakes up early in the morning so that you can get this habit, so you can make this new habit? It's quite how hard do you say? to do that, I'd say. I think it's quite hard to transition like that, but maybe you should do it in like steps, not yeah. necessarily like an instantaneous thing. Yeah, so you're absolutely right about the taking the small steps because you know, bringing it back to you know, our identities, you, what you need to do is you need to slowly expand um, your identity and that's how you grow and develop as a person in other areas of life. I think also like 
your brain also has sort of like this this shock in a way. It's like, oh my god, so- something completely has changed to what <coughs> I'm used to. What am I gonna do? And there's like, <coughs> oh, try to try to go back to what it was before. It's like, oh. So ultimately, we're stressing the importance of if you want to make or break new habits or make changes in your life. Um, it's really really important to take really small steps. And yeah. this is something. Um, in that book, Atomic Habits talks about as well. It's about um, they mentioned something about like the two-minute rule. So if you want to be someone who learns, wants to take on the habit of practicing playing your guitar, right? So the way you do it is just just commit yourself to practicing for literally two minutes every day. You're building this momentum, and you are actually slowly building off habit of being this someone who plays the guitar. You know, in this example, every day, even though it's just for one minute. Yeah, and I think like it, it goes the same way with running as well. Like maybe you don't necessarily have to run. Maybe you could just walk around the block yeah. for like a couple minutes. Just go to the shops and back. Not necessarily buy anything, obviously, <coughs> but like just go there and come back. And then once you've done that, it's like let's try, let's try to go further. Let's try <coughs> to go like five minutes or, or or ten minutes. The hardest step is always the first step, and so yeah. for that reason, it's really it's, it's extremely important that the first step you make it as easy as possible for yourself. Yeah. You just make the absolute smallest changes, but the the most on the only important thing is you need to do something. Literally, you just need to do something towards your goal. Just do it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Not sponsored by. <laughs> yeah, you literally just need to do something, anything that moves you towards that goal, because that's always the hardest step. You know, see it as every decision that you make, right? See it as you you are voting for you are voting for that kind of identity or that person. Every time you restrain yourself from drinking coffee or al- alcohol, right? Alcohol, yeah. Every time you're offered alcohol and you're like, oh, you know, no thanks. Every time you make that decision, you're voting to be someone who doesn't drink alcohol. So the more often you do it, then the more votes you have for that um, for that habit that you're trying to make um, or break. You know, I think that's actually a really good one to actually write down, like physically, either like put it on your phone or something like that because then you can actually see the number of times you've actually <laughs> yeah. not drunk alcohol within the month and think wow I haven't drunk um, <clears throat> alcohol 20 times that I that I should have or could have actually drunk today and think this is this has really changed who I've become and I think it sort of motivates you even <coughs> you know it's the motivation versus the environment and there's been a lot of studies that show that uh, your environment <clears throat> is actually more important than your motivation to actually create, um, to make or break habits. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. It's not kind of just the, the, the one thing, it's, it's about the convenience, if it's there, if it's easy, then it's easy to adopt or, or not. We're very heavily influenced by, I guess, peer pressure or the people around us or the yeah, environment definitely. around us. You joining like a running club and you surrounding yourself with people who runs every day or every week and they're all really into running and stuff. Like being around these people, it rubs off on you. I think that I think that's definitely a, a, a great one. Like joining other people to do the same thing or go along the same path <coughs> as everyone else and see your progression yeah. um, throughout that. Sort of like um, yeah, if you want to do some sort of exercise and you get on well with that person, then you can start exercising <coughs> together or joining a sport like like you said, like a club or, or whatever. Yeah. I think that's great to do because then you just sort of like oh, um, oh you'll get influenced to by them yeah. to do the exact <coughs> same thing or the same day and stuff like that. This helps um, upgrade your identity, or not, not, I guess upgrade is probably not the right word. It, it, it changes, changes yeah. it updates your identity to become that runner, and that's how you can adopt um, a new habit of becoming a runner. Okay. If you want to pick up a new good habit, make it really easy for you to adopt that habit. So if you want to drink more water, carry a bottle. Well, this is what I have. I always, I always have water with me at home when I'm grinding online. There's always a glass of water. You see me drinking it when I'm playing. Yeah. And the casino, you know, I generally always have a glass of water beside me. I make it really easy to take on the habit of drinking water. Convenience is actually one of the key things here yeah. when it comes to um, things where it's mostly to do with consumption, I think, um, or even even using your phone. I think people use your use your phone like <coughs> people... I, I use my phone like so much. I, have, I even have um, something yeah. on my phone that tells yeah. me how many times yeah. how many times I've actually opened my phone yeah. it's like 200 times in a day and it's like Jesus this is way way too much I need to reduce it like try to get it down to 150 at least but if you're a parent and you have a kid and you don't you don't want your kid to play video games so often on their console right so what you do is you can you can oh, say yeah. you can say to your kid fine if you want to play it um, every time you finish, you have to pack it up. You have to, you know, take the take the game uh, cartridge out of the console, pack it in, take the controllers, wrap it around, 
fit it into this box, put it in them, everything, and then put it back in your yeah, drawer. And it's like, you're making it so difficult. Yeah, and then the, and then it would deter them. It would be like, that, well, do I really want to... And that's how you can slowly get them to break that habit of, you know, not playing so much. And you're making it so difficult for them, right? Yeah. Yeah, so so far we talked about the, you know, if you want to uh, make or break new habits, you know, essentially you need to become that person that, that doesn't have these habits or that does have these habits. Um, and it's not just being on the surface level because then you're fighting against your, you know, your identity, right? So the way you make new habits is you become or adopt the same values as someone who uh, has those habits that you desire or the habits that you don't want. Uh, and then Rawls said uh, it's, um, you know, start small um, because the most important thing is to take action and do something, right? Don't make too much of a big of a jump because, I mean, it does clash with your personality as well because you need to expand your identity, not radically change it overnight because then you won't, be able to, you won't be able to sustain it because that's not who you are. Yeah. And doing that, you, know, you are also, you're, you know, you're voting for the type of person who you want to be. I think the environment and the accessibility is much more important than just your motivation. Uh, and, and your, and, well, <coughs> not just environment, but also the, well, environment-wise in terms of, like, having, having friends who join along the way as well. Yeah, I think, um, I think these are the tips that I think I would share that I've learned, that I apply as well in my own life. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, hopefully um, you guys have found this um, interesting. Anything you want to say for the fans, Husk? Stay loose, play seven deuce, gangsta. That's fine. Right. <laughs> Peace.